I recently took a class down at Hacker Lab on 3D printing and one of the nice things at the end is that the instructor Alan Ware printed a small chip just to demonstrate a quick print job. I recorded that and so we're going to walk you through kind of some of the basics of what's going on during that print job. I'm exporting a G-code file. So what Printerface does is it reads a G-code file. So you can set it up to do it directly, but just because of difficulty, I haven't done it yet. So what I do is I go into Slicer, and I generate a G-code file, which is essentially a listing of all the instructions to get to this. And then Printerface is then going to load that G-code file and run it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to Printerface, which is now up to temperature. I'm going to set it up a little bit higher. <coughs> Um, and then what I like to do, what I also like to do is just let it extrude for about uh, 20 millimeters to make sure that it's not binding up or something like that. Because one of the other problems that you can have is that if it's, if it's, if it's not feeding well, um, it'll jam up and it'll strip the film and it'll stop extruding. So I try to run it for a good little amount before I actually run one. Um, and then the inside. So then I will load the G-code file. Okay, and then it gives me an image. Basically, you're looking at the past, it's going to give me an estimation of how long it's, how long it's going to take. So now that I have got that, so one of the other things you can do is there are limit switches around the uh, around the um, machine to let it know where the home is. It doesn't feed its position back, so um, so it's very important that it starts off in a good place. It's not really messed up when it starts. There's another switch here. There's one uh, here, and there's one on the front here. So I can home each axis individually. It's going to go back to the switch. And it's going to know that's a zero point. Or I could do all three of them at the same time. So I'd already, already tapped off. I tap the Y, and it's going to tap the, uh, the Z. So, and you adjust the Z by this little screw over here. And it's going to touch off. Okay. So then I also pretty much check. I'm also checking to see that it's consistent as far as the height off the glass. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, you want to go for about a sheet of paper's thickness. Um, although, as you do prints, you'll kind of uh, you'll uh, you'll get it. You'll kind of figure out what's good and what's not. But this is good enough, at least for this. Is this kind of a first time setup thing or is this like uh, but, every use? But every use before like the calibration. Print. Yeah, by calibration. You definitely want to you want to home your axes before you run before you run a print. And you kinda wanna do a check, either an eyeball or there's also levels here as well, which which, which I sometimes use for the for the bar. Because sometimes that'll that'll get off. But yeah, so you definitely want you definitely want to clean you want to clean off the bed, you wanna um, just with the uh, acetone, you want to uh, home it and then you just wanna check for uh, check check how level it is. So then we're good. I can load the file, then everything else. I'm going to pull this forward a little bit. And I'm going to, keep, and then I'm going to click print. So right now what it's doing is I also, asked, I also put it to print like a brim and it's just going to put a couple layer of, layers of plastic outside of it. And that's again just to give a chance for the plastic to, be, to keep going. Because you saw on the, first, on the first circles I did it wasn't even putting anything there. So, but now uh, plastic is coming out. It's laying down pretty good, and then and then it's going to start uh, putting down uh, the actual. It's going to actually start filling in a moment. So this outer thing is not even part of your. No. no. It's just, just like put this down. Yeah, just kind of put it down to give it a chance. You'll see when it starts like because what because one of the things that it, it actually in slider is like the horizontal and vertical shelves. I had it set for three. So anytime that it's going to put, before it transitions to like this fill part, it's going to put three, three, three lines of material around it, then it's going to start filling it in. So at this point, it's probably closer to the actual, um, actual part aspect of it now. You'll see the, you'll see the, the, the difference a little bit better when you get to the second layer. So yeah, so now it's going to do the uh, cross infill. Now, also, it's going to do the first layer a little bit slower because I told it to. When it gets to the next layer, it's going to pick up. So that perimeter that you made, 
that would just be the first layer. You wouldn't you wouldn't set the entire model. Up no, just, no. So why did you do it around the actual? Why didn't you do it off the side somewhere where it wouldn't make a mess? Well, because 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 the thing is is that um, well, for number one, it doesn't matter how much you make how much of a mess it makes, but also with the uh, with the skirt, it gives me an idea because again, the nature of the machine. It gives me an idea of the physical like limits of my part. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing something really big, and maybe I miss set, I didn't set the center right or something like that, and it draws this big thing and it tries to go off the, go off the uh, edge here, better it doesn't on the first layer than it's still later in the part. And actually, so I did the actual exterior part, which you can't even see. But there's another option where it'll basically give a brim because what you'll see, what you'll see where it does a, the, the top part is, is that like whereas the actual limit is about here, it's going to start building right here, and that. And, and, I, and I do that sometimes just to give the plastic a chance to, uh, to, start, uh, to, to start coming out. Yeah, because the best, the, the best analogy I can give is just like if you have an old pen and you start running it for a minute to get paint going. So the so little script thing's just going to break off later? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Really. So it, it, it's almost done with the first layer, and then it's going to actually go to, the, uh, to, where, uh, to where the limit is. So I mean, I mean, you don't always have to do a brand, but I always try to at least do a skirt because it gets the plastic going and, and lets you see what the limits of the board are. So I didn't realize the base actually moved back and forth. I thought it was just raster, yeah. and so that it, I don't know how I figured that would work. Yeah. That's what's cool. Yeah, I mean, and different, uh, and like I said, different printers work different ways. Like on that one, like the head moves in the X, Y, and Z, and even different. Um, Um, not so much a marketplace. I mean, there's a lot of stuff like uh, Thingiverse, which is one of my MakerBot, is where I'll, you can find a lot of 3D parts. I don't know if there's really uh, like uh, I mean, there's nothing as well laid out yet that I'm aware of. Uh, I know that Shapeways uh, you can sell stuff. Well, then you have the option of Shapeways whenever you put a file in there to make it public and sell it. Yeah. So they automatically just put it on there. Shapeways. Shapeways like the you, you would know more about the sound. Yeah, I mean, yeah, main, yeah. Shapeways is probably like the biggest name in like on the mail, online three D printed. Uh, they can print, they can print, no, they can print just about anything. Yeah, you can print plastic, you can print metal, like uh, and oh, gold. They yeah, yeah, like, yeah, gold. Yeah, it's that rainbow stuff. Yeah, they, they, they can print a lot of different stuff. Uh, they're the ones who who actually print it out. Print yeah. It. yeah, yeah. So you, you pretty much you pretty much send them their file, uh, they verify it, and then they print it. And they take a while. Like yes, they're behind. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, so now, so now Especially looking at this thing, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. yeah. So, or like rainbow coral. Oh wow. Yeah, she's crazy. Yeah. So um, so yeah, but that's pretty much how it. Uh, that's pretty much how it goes. Um, so yeah, so now it's it, it, it's done. The, it's on the base layers. Now it's gonna now it's gonna put in the honeycomb for the whole layer. Yeah. Like okay. In total, it took about 10 minutes to print this little chip, but it's a good way of demonstrating what the inside looks like. You know, you think sometimes maybe that these things are hollow, but you need to have something so that you can lay plastic on top when you get to the top layers. It's never going to be hollow inside, but it will save a lot of plastic or ABS by not having it all be filled in completely solid. Plus, it's actually a little easier for it to finish because it won't be hot in the middle uh, as it would be if it was completely solid during the process. The base of this chip is going to break off very easily because it's about the thickness of a piece of paper. So it just snaps right off and then you can polish it and make it smooth quite easily by just using acetone because the ABS plastic uh, is easily melted with acetone. So there you go, a quick demonstration of 3D printing. Check out 3D printers near you. I guarantee somebody's doing this stuff in your neighborhood. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like it if you like it.